Yeah, no, he's a he's a he's an absolute baller. He throws one of the prettiest balls you'll ever see. Um, I got the chance to spend a little bit of time with him in Tahoe at the golf tournament this last year, and uh, he's an awesome guy too. So uh, he's been around some of my friends, whether it was uh, in New York with Sam or Mike. So heard a lot of good stories, a lot of good things about him, and I got to see it firsthand in Tahoe. So I got a lot of respect for him and um, his game. So uh, Super Bowl winning quarterback. That's you know. He's he's one of the one of the ones. He's he's fantastic player, but a, an even better person. I realize Amari has been out, but just uh, working with him and meeting him, just how you feel he's picked up, just the scheme in general, being an experienced guy like he is. Yeah, I mean, I think since day one when he stepped in the building, he was ready to go, and uh, he's only again continued to learn the playbook and learn his role in this offense. And um, you know, whether we get him back this week or the next or whenever that case is, you know, I know he's going to be ready to go and. Uh, it'll be kind of plug and play and feel pretty seamless out there. A couple familiar faces back, Jordan, Quentin. From your experience with them, what do they bring to the defense? What do they bring to the locker room? Well, big bodies, um, number one. Um, the familiarity with what we got going on here in Buffalo and the type of, type of men that we have in this locker room. Um, and they've been playing really good football. Um, you know, I think Q had 10 plus sacks last year, if I, if I recall correctly. And um, I know Phil's been. Uh, Hasn't been playing much this year uh, with an injury, but glad to have those two back. They've been, again, good locker room guys for us, and um, they'll make an, an immediate impact on the field. What do you see in this Colts defense? What's, uh, what are some of the issues you're going to be doing? Yeah, I mean, I think they move around well. Um, their linebackers, uh, they flow very, very fast. It's, you know, the hard group to run on. Um, and they play a lot of bend, don't break defense, where they're going to force you to take uh, some things that are underneath. I think their pass uh, rush unit's pretty, pretty dang good. Um, you know, as we get more into the third down and the red zone uh, today and tomorrow, we'll get a better sense of it. But um, you look at every game that they've played, they've, they've been in every single one. Um, and I think that's large in part due to their defense, um, you know, creating some takeaways and um, forcing or forcing field goals and not touchdowns uh, down there in the red zone. So it's a, it's a really good unit. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I think so. Um, and again, every every team's got different wrinkles when they play us, and we'll have to be prepared and ready to adjust uh, in game. But um, you know, typically from what they've shown this year, uh, pretty heavy in zone defense. Um, don't bring a whole lot of pressures on first and second down. But when they get you in third down, they uh, um, they're they're a good unit. So uh, we got to be prepared for the rest bunch. Yeah, I think a lot of it's ownership, guys taking accountability of, you know, if I told Joe that I want this play and he calls it, I got to go and make it work because, you know, uh, we're putting ourselves on the line there in terms of him trusting us. And, you know, as long as we keep executing um, some of the plays that we like, he's going to keep calling them. So, again, uh, the more you do, um, you know, Joe always talks about the greatest reward for doing is the opportunity to do more. So that's that's all it really is, is just making sure that we're holding ourselves accountable. And if, if he's going to go out there and um, be a friendly play caller like that, that we got to make it work and make him look good at the same time. I know obviously he wants to call plays that you're comfortable with especially, but is there, do you have any examples of maybe something you were really passionate that like he called that maybe he wasn't sure about, you know, or there was conversation about Yeah, I mean, I think it comes down to even going back to um, – a couple weeks ago in Seattle, third down, third and short. Um, go, there was a timeout. Um, go over to the sideline. I, I told him a play that I wanted, and he called it, and it worked out. And it's it's fulfilling for me that it worked, but for him too, it's like, all right, you know, I, I trust this guy in what he's seeing, and um, you know, to have a healthy relationship like that with your OC and he trusts you like that, it's a it's a dang good feeling. Yeah, I think uh, each and every year it's just, again, finding something that I want to improve on. Um, there's always something. I think this last year especially was the mental part of the game and understanding the offense and um, 
you know, just making sure that I'm, I'm making good decisions with the football, trying to limit turnovers. And I'm not going out there and not trying to throw interceptions. I think I'm just going out there trying to make the right decision um, and then trusting, trusting my arm, trusting my feet, and trusting the guys around me and uh, being okay with whatever outcome uh, comes with it. Yeah, I think it's a natural progression throughout the uh, the years that I've been in the league, and um, you know, wouldn't say that I had this type of command in my first couple of years. And every year that I've again grown and seen more football, and been in different situations, and um, been with different teammates, and learning how to handle different personalities, um, you know, that all plays into it. And again, that off season is a good time to sit back and reflect and, and bank those mental notes and um, really figure out how to be the best leader and the best teammate that I can be. Josh, how, how, how do you do that? Like, like, like how do you hone a mental approach when you're not playing football? Like, like, watch the film, talk to the coaches. Like, what, what's the yeah, I mean, talking lo- talking with coaches, obviously watching film, um, but again, talking with teammates and staying in touch and making sure that uh, we're on the same page and trying to get again as many mental reps as possible, um, whether we're on a football field or we're just hanging out, we're on the golf course. Um, again, talking, getting to know somebody deeper. Because uh, I, I, I do believe that pays dividends on the football field. What's it like when the switch goes on for the offense has happened after that turnover the first quarter on Sunday? Um, there's been several games where you guys have just went touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. What's that like and, 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 and why is it? Well, I think it's a good feeling when, it, when the switch is on and hopefully we can get that switch turned on uh, when the game starts. Um, but I think it's a culmination of a few things whether it's you know early on just again being mentally prepared ready to go um, but also like wearing on teams you know committing to the run game and um, you know getting the screen game involved and taking our shots but when they're not there to checking it down and making sure that we're holding on to the ball and ending every possession in a kick albeit a, a punt a field goal or a touchdown or a point after touchdown um, just again, I think uh, the more plays that you can run, the more opportunities that you have. And um, again, our O line's done such a good job of uh, creating lanes in the run game. Our, our running backs are running it hard. Um, and that puts the defense in a tough situation throughout an entire game. Josh, you talked with Elena that there are times this year where you've said on third down, I want to run this play. Is that something new this year, or is it your confidence level with the offense and where you are in, in your career that you've started to say, Hey, I, I want this. Is that something new? Did you do that your rookie year, or is this just something? Yeah, I didn't. I don't think I did it my rookie year, but um, it's not entirely new. Um, but again, for a, really a first-year play caller, if you will, with Joe and, and me, um, I know we had half a year last year, and this is the first full year. But for him to have that trust in me so early, that's obviously something that we've talked about, and um, we trust each other and, and feel good about. Um, and our relationship's only growing, so um, I, I appreciate and respect him for that and trusting me in those types of situations. Um, but ultimately, again, whatever he calls, I'm going to go up there and try to execute to the best of my ability. Josh, you're not making any major moves, trades, and purchases today. What do you think that does for the Yeah, I know he trusts trust the guy in this room, uh, trusts the guys in this room, and um, you know we've got a lot of love and a lot of faith in each other in this building, and uh, ultimately that's the, the only thing that matters. You mentioned Joe was a first-time play caller with this organization. Coach Curry comes in. What does he bring to the table uh, as quarterback? RC's been awesome. Um, he, he brings familiarity with Joe. Obviously, they were in New Orleans together for quite some time. Um, he's been around really good offenses. He's been around Drew Brees, who's one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Uh, a lot of good tidbits of information. Um, his ability to not just to speak to the quarterbacks, but when we meet as wide receiver group, you know, he's played the position, he's done that. He understands um, sometimes the, the, the way communication needs to be had uh, about certain routes or concepts with certain guys. And um, he's been a tremendous help for me. Uh, owe, owe a lot of success to him this year because he's been, he's been f- fantastic. And, and really everybody in that room has been so great. Um, I mean, I think it's just kind of how I grew up. Um, 
obviously grew up in the middle of nowhere. Uh, really just had my family. Mom was a stay-at-home mom and, and took care of us, and Dad was working a lot. But when we got into high school, uh, whether we were hanging out with friends or teammates, it was my parents did such a good job of like having everyone at our place, you know. Um, and maybe I just it's a learned trait of seeing that it was just spending time with other people um, and just getting to know each other. Again, not a whole lot to do out on the farm uh, except to you know, play cards, play outside, play some video games with each other. So uh, I think that's kind of where it stems from. Going back. Oh, they, they, they know it, they understand it, and they appreciate it, especially early on in the game when we're sitting in that meeting like, what play do you want to get going early, Cleo? Like, what, what would get you going? And he gives a play, and Joe's like, all right, that's, that's play number three, right? So, like, early on, um, it's, a, it's a good feeling as a, as a receiver or a tight end or a running back or even an old line to know that, like, what I'm saying is being heard by the guy that's calling the plays or on the field. One more question about Joe. Do different offensive coordinators have different ways of sort of approaching adjustments at halftime? How does Joe approach that specifically? And maybe how has that allowed you guys to be so successful in the second half of the season? Yeah, he's been as consistent as possible in terms of, you know, when we're in there, it's, hey, we're not going to blink. We're going to keep calling what we're calling. Let's keep wearing on guys and um, just hit our opportunities and, and play better. It's what it comes down to is going out there and executing the play that he calls. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I think they're very efficient. Um, you know, obviously with the running back, he's probably one of the best in the league. Um, just vision, uh, ability to make people miss, and then obviously speed and, and power too. Uh, I think he he has all the traits of a great running back. Uh, the quarterback, you know, he's he's been around the league for a really long time, played at a high level for a really long time, uh, seen everything. So you know, obviously a, a big part of our of our uh, stuff this week is going to be disguising and you know trying to not tip our hand early. Um, and then, you know, they've got threats on the outside as well. You know, a couple receivers that, that can really fly, uh, take the top off the defense. I think they've, they've gotten, um, you know, some of the most explosive plays in the league up to this point. And, um, you know, that's, a, that's an area of emphasis for us for the last couple of weeks. So, um, you know, they're, they're a really good offense. We're going to have our hands full this week. And that you guys have had your struggles in certain games with defending the running, as you mentioned, now going against one of the best running backs in the league. Just how does that elevate even more this week? Yeah, for sure. I think, um, you know, I think what it comes down to is everybody doing their job, uh, standing in the gaps and getting off blocks and making plays at the end of the day. Um, we're going to spend a lot of time this week talking about how we need to fit the run, uh, you know, how we need to defend the run better. And rightfully so, you know, we didn't we didn't do a good enough job last week. Um, but, you know, you go back two weeks and, and we did we did a really good job. So I think just the consistency of of what we're doing, um, everybody understanding the job, and then you know at the end of the day doing your job and, and making plays when it's time your time to make a play. Chance and Taylor, just like you said, is a particular kind of star in the NFL. Just looking at last week, do you feel like Miami? They're just different. I mean, it's like your game plan against Miami. Every team is a little different, but Miami yep. is a different than any other. The game plan against Miami isn't like any other. Of For sure. Yeah, it is. It is different. Um, you know, they've got obviously guys on the outside that can take the top off at any moment. Um, so really defending the, the run with lighter boxes and, uh, you know, trying to two gap and do that type of thing, as well as, you know, making sure we're all on the same page with as many motions that they were doing shifts, that type of thing. Um, and I think that's where that's where we can improve. I think the communication aspect, starting with myself, uh, getting all 11 guys on the same page and, you know, moving in the same direction. Um, I think once we get that cleaned up, um, you know, we'll be we'll be better. And I think, you know, like you said, the the style of, of offense that they ran is different. You know, it's different than, than pretty much any other team in the league. So, um, you know, moving on to this week, you know, we're excited for the challenge. Like like we said earlier, they got one of the best the best backs in the league, one of the best offensive lines in the league. Um, so it'll be it'll be a challenge for us. 
Mm. Yeah, Big Phil is awesome. Um, you know, he's one of the first vets that kind of took me under his wing when I got here. Uh, my locker was actually right next to his at St. John Fisher in training camp, so I got to spend a lot of time with him and, and got, got pretty close with him and his family. Um, I think, you know, just his, his experience, he's been, he's been a lot of places. He's played a lot of good football. Uh, his physicality, he's a real big dude, obviously. Um, you know, takes up blocks, makes plays in the run game, can pass rush as well. And then, you know, just his energy and, and who he is as a person, as a man, as a teammate. Um, I think anytime you can get a vet like that in the room and in the building, um, it's, it's going to be awesome for us. Uh, seeing him this morning was was good, man. It was it was like a, a breath, you know, a breath of fresh air, you know, just just having him back and having him around. Um, so, you know, all of us are excited for him. No offense to the fact that you filled in so well, but have you ever stepped back with all the injuries and thought what this defense could do if it was fully healthy? Uh, I tr I try not to live in that in that mindset. I think um, obviously we've had injuries. I think every team has injuries. Um, you know, some of the ones that we've had were major key contributors and, and things like that. But uh, I think, you know, everybody that's played for us has has played up to the standard and has done their job and has played well. Um, and, you know, I think the depth that that, you know, uh, Brandon has built and, you know, Coach McDermott have brought in has been on display. So when, you know, some guys go out, you know, other guys step in and play up to the to the standard that everybody else has. Um, so I think that's that's the, really the mindset, and you know when everybody gets healthy, then we'll see we'll see what happens. Well, that, I was going to flip the question that way. Do you look forward to when everybody gets healthy? This whole unit is together. I mean. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, for sure, I think so. Um, you know, just just having the opportunity to play with you know guys like Matt when he comes back. Um, you know, that'll be that'll be special just because of the the type of guy, type of person, type of player he is. Um, but, you know, until that moment, you know, we're focused on what we're doing right now and, and, you know, how we can improve every day. Yep. Yeah, I think it starts early in the week. Um, you know, me and Bobby have a really, really good and close relationship. You know, he was a linebackers coach my last, my first couple of years here. Um, so I think, you know, in the defensive unit meeting, he'll come in and really set the mindset for everybody going into the into the game. You know, things we need to do, things we need to improve on, and then just the 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 mental space that we need to get to in order to win the game. Um, and then for me personally, you know, we talk, you know, 24/7. Um, he's giving me tips, keys, you know, anything that that he thinks I need to focus on or anything he thinks I need to you know display and give to the defense to to help all of us. Um, and you know, I think he's been one of the best in the building at, at that, just really shaping our mind and our mental um, approach every single week. How important is that to not only do that for you guys individually, but it sounds like you yeah. Engage. yeah, I think it's really important. You know, it's a, it's a long season and, um, you know, you can't, you can't look past any week. You can't, you can't miss any days. And I think he does a good job of, you know, after the game's over, coming back, you know, assessing where we need to get better. And then, like I said, just framing the mental aspect of it, of where we need to go, you know, heading into each game. Did you see what Saquon Barkley did? I did. That was insane. Yeah, <laughs> it was insane. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't really know how you can defend that. Um, you know, he made a couple guys miss, and then, you know, he has his back to somebody and jumps over him. Like, that was, it was insane. Uh, he was, he's one of the best backs I've ever played. So, you know, seeing him do something like that was just, it was insane. It's another yeah. Miami. Yep. But you know that it's just the, now the guard has an angle on you. Are yep. you thinking, okay, how am I going to get back and defeat that? Or can you not think that too much because now you're not playing it on us? You know? I think, yeah, I think I think it goes both ways. Um, I think you kind of have to fill it out throughout the game and get an idea of what they're trying to do. You know, Miami did a lot of, like you said, jetting to one side and then running outside zone the opposite way. So they get you moving to a certain gap and then, you know, try to get angles on you in the run game. Um, you know, that's a that's a common theme in the NFL, but I think Miami does it really well. Um, but like I said, I think it's it's just part of the game that you have to feel and kind of understand whether they're trying to to get you to move the wrong way or trying to get you to just get angles uh, in the run game. So I think it's a it's a feel type of thing throughout throughout the week. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you.